Hello. In this presentation, what we're going to be doing is running through a few examples of how to enter data and run the analysis when conducting an unrelated t-test. Like all of these presentations, we won't be looking into the theory behind the test, so we recommend that you read up on the relevant chapter in the textbook and have a look at the uh, PowerPoint notes and worksheets from the relevant workshop. Let's begin. Before we talk about the t-test itself, one point that is important to make is that the unrelated t-test is sometimes referred to as an independent samples t-test or just an independent t-test. These different names confuse people, obviously, but they're all referring to the same test. So whichever name you see used in the textbook or in SPSS, uh, it's this test that they're talking about. Like all t-tests, its purpose is to compare two sets of scores to see if they are significantly different. Because it's an unrelated or independent t-test, one thing we know is that the two sets of scores come from two groups with different people in each group. So you won't have anybody appearing in both groups. Um, the standard design which uses this kind of t-test would be uh, control and experimental design where you have a control group who don't take the drug or don't participate in the training and then a completely different group of people, the experimental group, and they do take the drug or they do participate in the training and you're trying to compare their two sets of scores to see if they're signif significantly different. So let's look at an example of this kind of research. This first example is taken from the worksheet that you will have completed in the workshop. Um, researchers comparing two sets of sprinters. One group of sprinters comes from HOPE, the other group comes from JMU. Researchers interested in finding out if they are significantly different, if the average speed of the HOPE team is significantly better or significantly worse than the average speed of the JMU team. So it's an ideal design for using an unrelated t-test. You've got two groups of people, different people in each group. Uh, now, if we just take one participant as an example, let's say the first person on the HOPE row, we can see that there's two things we know about this person. Firstly, we know they come from HOPE University because they're in the top row. Um, we know the speed that they ran the 100 meters in, which is 13 seconds. Same is true for all the other participants. There are two things we know about them, which university they're from, and what their speed was or what the, how quickly they ran the 100 meters. I'll need to remember this when it comes to setting up the data file. So let's switch over to SPSS and start setting up our data file. Um, before we can input data, we need to set up our variables. We do this by clicking on the Variable View tab here at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. This brings us into the Variable window. So we need to name our two variables. Well, the first variable I'm going to call University. If I press return, it sets up all the rest of the values for that variable automatically. There are two values I want to set myself, though. So I go to the values box, and I click on the little gray box here with the three dots in it. Now, since this variable indicates which university they're from, I'm going to need to set up two possible values. Value, the first value, which I'll call number one, is going to represent people from hope. So I type in hope as the label for that value. I add it, and now anybody who has a 1 on that variable, I'll know they're from HOPE. The second value, I click on the values box again, delete the 1, type in a 2 this time, go to the label box, delete HOPE, and type in JMU. Click on Add, and now I've got the two possible values for this variable set up, HOPE and JMU, represented by a 1 and a 2 respectively. Click on OK, and that variable is now set. The second variable I'll call time because this represents the time in which they ran the 100 meters in. With my two variables set up, I can now start entering the data. Click on the data view tab here at the bottom left hand corner of the screen and now I'm ready to start inputting data. For the university variable, well I know there are 10 people from HOPE so I can put in 10 people with the value 1 which represents someone from HOPE. And there are 10 people from JMU, so I can do the same thing for JMU students, 10 people with the value 2. I can click on the little value label button here. If you hover over this button here, value label appears as a name. If you click on the button itself, you'll see the 1s and 2s turn into their labels, Hope and JMU, so you can see that, yes, you have set them up correctly. 
click on the button again, they go back to being ones and twos. It's just a way of checking that you've inputted your data correctly. Now I need to input the times. So I put in the 10 times that the Hope Runners ran, which I can see if I look back at my data. And I can put in the 10 times that the 10 JMU runners ran the 100 meters in. So I've inputted my data. The next thing I need to do is to analyze it. To do that, I go up to Analyze, click it, and the menu appears. I select Compare Means. And then from the Compare Means options, I select Independent Samples T-Test. You can see that all of my variables are in the box on the left-hand side there. And then there's two boxes on the right, the grouping variable and the test variable. Um, the grouping variable is going to be whichever of my variables identifies my different groups. In this case, it's university, so university is already selected. I click on the purple arrow, it moves it over to the grouping variable box. Now at the moment, you can see there's university and two question marks. This is because the computer doesn't know that there are only two possible values in the university variable, one and two. As far as the computer knows, there could be hundreds of different possible values, each one representing a different group, so it needs to know which two groups am I going to compare in this t-test. To tell it that, I need to go into the Define Groups. I click on the Define Groups box here. And it now has two boxes for me to indicate the two groups that I want to compare in this t-test. I want to compare group number one, which I've represented using the number one, and group number two, which again I've represented using the number two. I click on Continue, and now the computer knows that these are the two groups I'm going to be comparing. The other variable, time, is going to be my test variable, so I move it over to the test variables box. I'm now ready to run the analysis, so I click on OK. And now get the output window. The first thing I can see, the first box contains the descriptive statistics. This tells me things like the number of people in each group, which is 10 in each case, and the average score in the test variable. So the average speed of the Hope Runners was 12.1 seconds and the average speed of the JMU runners was 15 seconds. Um, this will become important again when I find out if I do have a significant difference or not, but for the moment I can just leave it to one side and move to the second box here which shows me the results of the Levine's test and the t-test itself. The Levine's test is a test of equality of variances. I need to look at this first before I can see which of the t-test results is the right one for this data set. The Levine's results are the first two numbers here, the 2.104 and the 0.164 results. Um, I need to look at the significance value of the Levine's test, which is the 0.164. If that number is significant, then I need to look at the bottom row from then on, because I don't have equal variances. If that number is not significant, then I look at the top row from then on, because I do have equal variances. Well, 0.164 is well above the 0.05 score that I'm looking for for significance, which means it isn't significant, which means I look at the top row from then on. So if I follow the top row across, I get the T result, degrees of freedom, and the significance of the t-test itself. In this case, the t-test is significant. 0.001 is well below the target value of 0.05. So it means there is a significant difference between the two groups. And if I look back at my means here, I can see that the hope runners are faster. And what the significant result means is they're not just faster, they're significantly faster than the JMU runners. Now that's an example of a t-test, inputting the data, and analyzing it. If you want to go back over that again, just press rewind on the recording. If you feel you understood that, let's move on to the second example to see if you can follow it again. So I'm going to close down this output window and I'm going to set up a new data window to input the next data set. So let's go back to my PowerPoints to see what the next example piece of hypothetical research is. This time the researcher is looking at 
the effect of diet and exercise on mood. Uh, they've got uh, patients who have all been diagnosed with mild depression and they've got one group of patients who are going to try out this new diet and exercise plan that the researcher has developed and then they've got a completely another group of patients who are going to use the old plan, the one that they have been using up until now. And what the research is going to do is after the group using the new plan have been using it for a while, they're going to compare their scores on a measure of happiness to the scores of the people using the old plan to see if the new plan is significantly better than the old one. So like the last time, if you look at the data set, you can see that there's two things we know about each participant. We know which exercise and diet plan they're using, either the new one or the old one. And we know what their happiness score is from the MFI measurement. So we need to set up our data file. So let's go back to SPSS. We go back to the variable view by clicking on the tab down here. We set up our first variable and this is going to be, we'll call it plan. This represents whether they're using the old plan or the new plan. Like the last time, we need to click on the values box, click on the gray box of the three dots and set up our two values. Value number one is going to be the new plan. So anybody with this score is using the new plan. And value number two is the old plan. Click on add. We've now set up the values for this variable. Click on OK. The second variable is going to be their happiness score. So we'll type in happy. And now we've set up our two variables, we're ready to enter the data. Go back to the data view. Like the last time, we can set up the scores for the plan, or which plan they're using. So there's going to be 10 people who are on plan number one, which is the new plan, and 10 people who are on plan number two, which is the old plan. If I click on my little value labels button, I can see the numbers being converted into their labels, which shows me I've set it up correctly. Click on it again, they go back to being numbers. So now I can put in the scores they got on the um, MFI measure of happiness. So here are the 10 scores that the people on the new plan got. And here are the 10 scores that the people on the old plan got. So I've inputted all my data. The next thing I need to do is run my analysis. So like the last time, I go to Analyze. I go to Compare Means and I select the independent samples t-test. The grouping variable is going to be plan, so I select that, click on the little purple arrow beside grouping variable. Again, I have to define my groups. So again, I've got two groups using the values one and two. Continue. And the happiness score is my test variable, so I move that across to test variable using the purple arrow. And now I'm ready to go, and I click on OK. So, again, I've got some descriptive statistics. These tell me that the average score for people on the new plan is 31 and the average score for the people on the old plan is 26.2. So it looks like the people on the new plan are happier, but are they significantly happier? Well, looking down here at the results of the t-test, first thing I do is look at the score for the Levines. The significant score for the Levines is 0.34. This is well above 0.05, so it's not significant, which means I look at the top row from then on, got a t-score of 4.4, .4, degrees of freedom of 18, and most importantly, the significant score is 0 0.000. Now, this is SPSS's way of reporting a score that's too small that it can't show at all. So the actual score is probably much lower than 0 0.001, but we don't know exactly what it is. It's not zero, but it's well below 0 0.01, which is the smallest one it can show you here on the screen. All we need to know, though, is that it is significant so it would seem that the 
people on the new plan are significantly happier than the people on the old plan. And what this would suggest was that the new plan seems like a good idea. Okay, again, if you followed that, we can move on to the third example. If you're not sure, replay the last example by rewinding this presentation. And uh, when you're ready, move on to the third example. So again, I'm going to close this output window. Um, and if I go back to the PowerPoint, let's look at the third example. Now this third example, the researcher is looking at students like yourselves uh, using different memorization techniques. There are 10 students the researcher locates who are using repetition as their method of memorizing things. So you know, reading it over and over again. And there are 10 students who use elaboration. So trying to make links between the memory or what they're learning and other memories, other things they've learned. And the researcher is trying to find out if the different methods of memorization result in different grades. So they've asked the students which method of memorization they prefer. And then they're going to ask the students if they can look at their scores or their grade at the end of the year. So as you can see, there are two things we know about each student, which memorization technique they use and what grade they received at the end of the year. Now at this point, I'm going to ask you to pause the recording and to input this data yourself into SPSS and try and run the analysis. When you've done it and you think you've got a result and you think you understand it, then play the recording again and you'll see how we did it and what result we got and you'll be able to see if yours is the same as ours. So pause the recording now, and when you've completed entering and running the analysis, play it again. Hopefully you have paused the recording previously, have entered the data and tried to run it. If so, we'll now get to see if your results are the same as the ones that we are going to get. So let's move over to SPSS. And I'm going to open up the data file I created earlier to represent the data from the memorization and performance study. So you can see I've got two variables. One represents the memorization techniques they used, either repetition or elaboration. And the second variable represents the grade they got. If I click on my little value label button, you can see the two values, the two labels I've used. OK, so let's find out if they're significantly different. I go to Analyze, Compare Means, oops, Independent Samples, T-Test. Technique is my grouping variable. You may have called it something else. It doesn't really matter what you called it as long as it's the variable representing which memorization technique they used. Again, I need to define my groups, 1 and 2, Continue. And the grade is the test variable. Click on OK. So let's look at the descriptive statistics first. Well, the average grade that people used repetition or for the people who used repetition is around about 53%. So they're getting about a C. And the average grade for the people who used elaboration is 55. So they're getting a slightly better C, but it's not really that different. It doesn't look like I'm going to find a big difference, but before I can be certain, I need to look at the results of the t-test itself. Well, first of all, I need to look at the Levine's test. And we can see here that it's 0 0.708 is the significance of the Levine's test, which is not significant. So I look at the top row from then on. The t-value is very small, 0 0.41. And the significance, not surprisingly, is not significant. So it's 0 0.687, which is well above 0 0.05. So it's not significant. So this tells us that there is no significant difference between these two methods of memorization when it comes to the grades people are getting. So it doesn't seem to matter which kind of memorization technique you use. You, your grades don't seem to depend on it. Hopefully you'll have gotten the same scores that I got. If you got slightly different scores, it's possible that maybe you've inputted one of the pieces of the data incorrectly. So check that your data is correct. Um, otherwise, you might want to run this presentation again to make sure you've understood how to run the t-test correctly. Hopefully you found this useful and um, 
if you've got any more questions about how to run a t-test or what it means you should talk to your tutor thanks very much